7.5 billion people. I'll come back to that number later. But first, let me explain nanotechnology to you. In a nutshell, great things come in small packages. <laughs> 7.5 billion people. That is the current population of our planet. And by the time our grandkids will be in the workforce, this number will be over 11 billion people. Imagine that. So let us all take a deep breath and think about it. What will the world of our grandchildren look like? How will all of us be living? How will we ensure that we have enough resources to provide for the masses, especially given that human lifespan is only increasing with time? Now, to be sure, please know I am not a doomsayer. I am, in fact, a very optimist scientist. And when I look at our history, I see that human beings have always been able to overcome challenges with breakthroughs in technology and innovation. As they say, the Stone Age did not end because the world ran out of stones. It ended because we humans created and adapted. More recently, we had the Industrial Revolution to sustain the needs of a growing population. So the real question is, what are those breakthroughs in technology that will help us sustain our needs in the future? But more importantly, how will those breakthroughs impact our economy, our careers, and our jobs? I am here to talk to you about nanotechnology, which is a very important aspect of our technological future, and it is already helping us address some of these needs. So many of you here may wonder, what is nanotechnology? To give you an idea, if you were to take a strand of your hair and chop it up in 1,000 pieces across its thickness. Yes, 1,000 pieces of one strand of your hair across its thickness. That one 1,000th one piece is about the size of a nanometer. And when you start making things at that small nanometer scale, they the materials start behaving very, very differently. So to give you an idea, if I were to take gold that we wear as jewelry, and if I were to make that at the nanoscale, the color of that gold appears to be red. And the same nano gold is currently being tried out for targeted cancer therapy. And if this works, patients no longer will incur the side effects of chemotherapy, such as hair loss. Now, who would have thought that gold that we wear as jewelry can be used for targeted cancer therapy? That is the power of nanotechnology. So as His Highness the Al Khan once said, discoveries in science are like windows into the creation of God. We scientists take these discoveries in nature and then we mimic them. We make tens and hundreds of these nanomaterials, we combine them, we package them to present solutions to many of the 21st century problems, but in very unique ways. So thanks to the foresight of my parents, my brothers, and the support of my husband, I am a nanotechnologist from Rice University. And one of the most cutting edge labs run at Rice is by Professor Ajayan, who is truly a global pioneer in discovering, synthesizing, and coming up with applications of nanomaterials. By the way, Dr. Ajayan is with us here today in this room, and I sure hope that he is nodding his head in agreement with me as I speak and not really looking for the nearest exit. <laughs> <laughs> so at the time when I was working in Dr. Ajayan's lab, him and his teammate came up with these nanomaterials and turned them into paint. Except this is no ordinary paint. This paint is actually a battery. And this is the same lithium ion battery that we use to charge our laptops, our cell phones, electronics, except it is in the form of paint and it is rechargeable. Now this battery can be spray coated onto walls, plastics, paper, 
What you see here in black is actually that spray-coated nano battery. And it has the potential to turn any surface area into a rechargeable battery, but without occupying extra space or adding to extra weight as the lithium ion batteries that we use today do so. So this technology on a global scale has the ability to address the needs of many marginalized communities across the world. These communities no longer need to be connected to the grid, or they no longer need access to huge amounts of capital in order to access energy. You can imagine small towns being lit up and having access to clean water powered for by these nano batteries. Now, this also changes the landscape for geopolitics, healthcare, manufacturing, education, pretty much anything that is dependent on energy. Now, locally, for industrialized nations like ourselves, what, what does this mean? You can imagine driving cars that are truly green that can generate and store its own power. Or imagine the cost of transportation for outer space projects dramatically being driven down. And for those of us living in Texas, working in oil and gas or space, how do we harvest these opportunities? By the way, this technology is already prototyped, so it is important that we realize we will need good policies and governance to address the growing opportunities coming our way in Houston. So having access to energy so easily, how does this impact education? I'll talk to you about that in just a moment, but first, some of you here may already know that Samsung has prototyped these beautiful, flexible electronic devices. And in due time, these paintable batteries will pave the way forward for flexible, wearable electronic devices. And as these gadgets become more ubiquitous, cheap, easy to produce, distribute, they are self-powered, people in the remotest corners of the planet will have access to communication devices and will now be able to communicate globally. On the education front, we have already seen Han academies of the world democratize education with their online courses. So in the future, with more and more people having access to these gadgets, people will have access to higher education. But what does this mean for us, where our income securities and job securities are tied to higher education? How do our kids survive in this very meritocratic but highly competitive environment? My husband and I often talk about this, and quite frankly, we are thrilled because creativity has no bounds. And you never know what child in a certain town will end up being the pioneer who cured cancer or figured out the theories of black holes. But what we do know is we will see lots of creative solutions being developed from across the planet, and that will uplift humanity as a whole. Now, as I mentioned to you in the very beginning, that we are expecting a global surge in population. And many of us may have already wondered, how will healthcare be sustainable given the rising costs of therapeutics and diagnostics? I believe that nanosensors will clearly allow both physicians and patients to monitor health in very efficient and cost-effective ways. Now, I myself work with nanosensors in healthcare diagnostics, and the way a nanosensor works is that it is extremely sensitive to the smallest change in its surroundings. And it is able to detect at concentrations of parts per million or parts per billion. So to give you an idea, imagine if you can detect one second in 11.5 days. Or if you can detect one minute in two years a nanosensor has the capacity to detect that slightest change. Now, remember in the beginning, so how does this help us with healthcare? In the beginning, I told you great things come in small packages. What I have here today is a small chip. And this is made of nano architectures and nanomaterials. 
and it's a nanosensor. But this is not one nanosensor. You can fit about 50 nanosensors on this small chip. So scientists use these nanosensors to make what we call a lab-on-a-chip device. And currently, these lab-on-a-chip devices are able to detect certain cancers just by using human saliva. It is very possible in the future, given the heightened sensitivity of these devices, that we will be able to detect cancers even before they turn into tumors. Now, wouldn't that be a game changer? They have these lab-on-a-chip devices that allow you to monitor cardiac arrests very promptly and rapidly. So in the future, what you will see is these nanosensors constantly monitoring patients for non-communicable diseases and preemptively sending alerts to patients, telling them in 20 minutes or in two hours, they're likely to experience a heart attack, so to go check themselves into the nearest ER. And here is the icing on the cake. Once these devices, once we achieve economies of scale on these devices, we can buy them at places like CVS or Walgreens. And patients themselves can monitor their health for a fraction of the cost, the same way we wear Fitbits to monitor our steps or heart rates. So a longer lifespan changes our demographics. And with that, it changes our healthcare, retirement plans, retirement age, financial planning, housing, and many other things. So as somebody once said, Never look at the smallness of things. The rewards are inversely proportional. And I hope today, as a nanotechnologist, I was able to highlight some of the creative aspects of nanotechnology and its profound implications on our future and the future of all mankind. And remember what I told you in the beginning, great things come in small packages. Thank you. <laughs>